Check this out, dudes. We're actually joining the throngs of backyard beekeepers for real. We've actually started off with blooming normal hives and we've worked our way backwards instead of forwards. A lot of people get a flow hive first up and then get some other hives because of course the bees breed their asses off. But we've had requests from all of you viewers to actually give the flow hives a crack. And what's more, you've emailed the boys at Flow Hive and they've sent us one to try out. So how bloody good is that? So cheers on to the Flow Hive boys for getting involved. And thank you viewers for giving them a rouse up. And this will be an honest review about what we think about flow hiving. So it comes pretty cool, you get two packets, which is really awesome. So I reckon this is your brood box and actually your super box. And that looks like your little, we haven't opened this one yet. Maybe we'll open that because I don't, I know what's in here because I couldn't help myself. We haven't opened this one yet. So we'll start backwards. Now that would be something different for me, wouldn't it? So this is the, this is the technology part of the beehive. This is, oh, it's very nicely packaged up. This is like Christmas. Oh, like it's the back scratcher. What was that from the Simpsons? Back scratcher, back scratcher, anybody want a back scratcher? Anyway, I'm being silly. That's the cool key that turns the frames. How good's that? I think my first piece of advice just right now is don't lose anything, because I'm pretty sure all of this shit's important. There's must be some instructions here somewhere, and I would imagine being me, I've started backwards. I've, I will put that down there, and we better, oh, look, hey. Look at that, there would be some directions. What's this got to say for itself? Beekeeping safety. There's got a whole lot of cool basic beekeeping directions, which is kind of cool. So what about one, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. We'll open this and see what this looks like. So I think this is the fancy part of the whole program, isn't it? Wow, look at that. Okay, so that's your honeycomb. Cool. Anyway, we better have a, get ourselves organized because it's getting bloody hot in here. We're gonna get our brood box organized and we'll check this out in a minute but that's pretty cool so you actually get all your directions for being a beekeeper not just for making this box work we might put this out of the way for a moment oh, look at that hey that all looks pretty bloody snazzy i have a sneaking suspicion that's a special hat in there <laughs> look at that look at that that's what I wanted. I wanted one of them, but with the Bush Bee Man on the front. But we've got one with a flow on it. That's pretty cool. Let's put that on. What do you reckon? Do you reckon if we made a fly-proof Bush Bee Man hat, that would work? How cool is that? They'd want to be friendly bees if you were just going to wear this. But anyway, we'll give it a crack. I reckon that's pretty groovy. Anyway, so we've got the top, top board cover. So you can seal the girls in a bit, keep them nice and cozy. And then we've got the queen excluder. Oh, look at that, more directions. So this will be our bottom board. I would say that's to keep, so you can put that in there for the bugs. That's sort of everything, these lads. Now that's a bit interesting. So that will be the opening, won't it? And they'll be sloping backwards. Very cool, that looks nice. Looks a little bit like a pre-made shed. It's got all the pre-holes drilled. Gosh, hope I never don't screw this up. Oh, and we got some frames. We'll make some of them for you, but we don't actually need to because what we're going to do is take some bees that we've already got and put in here. But we'll make up some frames to show you that bit. Very nice. What have we got? So I always say this is the super box, the top bit. Give that a little snip. These are all their end boards. These are, I mean, these are your side boards, I should say. Sorry, because that's the long bit. Normally when I put my wooden boxes together, I treat all these, um, you know, open bits, the tongue and groove when you put it together, because obviously your paint or your sealant isn't gonna get in here. So I usually paint that with a bit of pink primer if I'm doing the paint, or a bit of linseed oil if I'm not, or tongue oil, which is what we're gonna use for this, because it's kind of cool. So I think what we'll do is we'll get our, I'll go and get some glasses and we'll get this box off the table and we'll figure out which is the brood box because I should imagine a brood box is the first thing we want to make. So I'm just following the directions and I would imagine the first thing or the most important thing to do is what I always do anyway is make the brood box first. So we've put all the super components out the way and we've got the brood box pieces here 
and I'm just looking at our little packets here, which is all very conveniently packaged up. So they've got their brood box screws in one line, and they've got the super screws and the other bits and pieces in another bag, and the other cool bits of wood that we'll put together. So I figure we'll get the bloody these ones out and put them in a little pot, and then we'll start putting it together. So we'll just sit it all together first before we screw anything. So as it actually make sure all the tongue and grooves are all perfect. They usually are pretty good when they've been, look like these have been pretty professionally done. So that'd be all, well, you'd expect it professionally done, wouldn't you? Golly gosh, it is a flow hive after all. Golly. Anyway, just make sure your bloody handles are at the top. That's always fun. Don't put the thing together upside down. So we'll just make sure all the tongues are nice and snug, which they look like they're gonna be. Now, of course, if you wanted to get excited, you can go and get yourself a um, pair of clamps. But being that I've done a few of these, what I will go and do, though, is a set square. So I just double check that we get it all nice and beautiful. So hold that thought. Just make sure you put it, this one's actually got a cool screw setting, so that you can't get too carried away. Don't have it on the drill setting, so the bloody thing will bloom and drive the head straight through the top of the whole thing. Because after all the effort of getting your nice flow hive, you don't want to be one of those customers that ring up and say, can I have a new end because I got carried away with my drill? So, just something to remember. Don't get carried away with your screwing together straight away because you want to be able to wriggle it a little bit. But the cool thing about tongue and groove is it you're really hard pressed to screw it up, but hopefully if I screw it up, we won't show you. Well, I reckon that's that put together, which is pretty cool. I reckon maybe we might just put one of the frames together just to show you how to do that, even though, like I said, we're gonna use an established beehive that we've already got here. But we might just do that, so you can see that part, because that'll be the next bit you'll need to do. On the directions here, it has like a little um, bottom, like a strip for the comb guide, which is a kind of cool idea, because it would not be would probably not be the easiest option to actually send stuff in the mail with the wax sheets or plastic sheets. It'd take up that much more room. So you got this nice little bit of strip of wood for them to get started building on. So that'll be a nice little building frame. So the ladies will come up here and know where to start building their comb and they'll make little circles for a start, which will be kind of cool. And then eventually they'll fill it all in. So, anyway, so you just put your little ends on your top and your little bottom bar. Now these have got a groove at the top and the bottom, so you could use a plastic foundation. Also got your holes for wax foundation, or you've got your little, what do they call it? I would call it a starter board, but a little, a little place for the girls to go to get an idea to build their frame, their, their own. You want to get all excited, you can get some aqua deer and stick it all together. But, oh hell, I don't know. I don't really bother, because I sometimes think if you want to, sometimes if you're mucking around and you break one of these, you might want to knock it apart and just fix it. If you've got it all glued up, there's no way to knock anything apart. So you've got to make sure you got it square, obviously. When you make your frames up, you can, you've got to put two nails in the top, because obviously this is when you're going to lever it out of your hive, you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on this. Or you can put one in this way. So, I normally just put two straight down, but. Now you only need one in the bottom one because that's not going to take anywhere near as much pressure. Yep. And then we'll just sit that in your brood box. And away we go. Well, you want to make your frames up, especially if you're buying a little box of bees, they're going to need somewhere to live. And pop, then that will pop them all together. But like I said earlier, we've actually got a hive out here that we're going to transfer into here, so we don't need to make all these frames. Cool, so that'll be a little perspex window, but we won't need that just yet. So we'll pop that over here. So we've got this cool end, which is the bit that you open up to get to your honey flow to make sure that that goes over there according to those pitches. Of course, just making sure we've got the handles at the top. 
snuzzy. I would suggest we don't screw that bit because that's got to come in and out. So this bit is the bit you screw, I reckon, by the look of it. Just put a screw in here to get it started, just so as we've got one spot that's secure. <laughs> That'll be a good place to start. Give us one spot that we can work from. Oh, that's right, there's another piece that goes on there, isn't there? as if we got the next bit we do. I don't know, hang on, we should read the fix the metal strip. I was right, look at that, even without reading the last bit of directions. So there's a metal strip that goes across here. This is so that your cool door's got something to sit on. I don't know, I, I don't know, but I haven't actually asked them, but it would be really interesting to know how many bloody years did they take to, just to figure this little bit out? Never mind that bit, that's kind of crazy. Actually, that's kind of totally cool. We'll get to that. But just to work out actually how to put the box together to put that in is kind of pretty cool. I mean, I can just imagine, if they're anything like me, I can just imagine a few little excitements that went on prototype number six. It was like, holy shit. Sitting around the kitchen table going, well, I don't know. <laughs> Whose bloody bright idea was this? <laughs> If a bloke had two drills, he wouldn't have to keep swapping over, would he? And hopefully by pushing it into the spot where I think it will be, we're not going to make the door too tight. Otherwise, I'll have to plug and get the father-in-law here with his sandpaper and make it fit. And before I send it all the way home, we'll make sure the door can come off, on and off. Which it does. Oh, look at that. Oh, Oh, it's just bloody spectacular, isn't it? That's looking pretty good so far. We're up to the window bit now, so we're going to peel off our cardboard. No, what is that? Protective layer, I suppose, <laughs> whatever that's called. Got a nice little recess for the um, perspex to sit in, which is kind of groovy, so we'll get this off here. <laughs> it's so bloody hot, the paper's melted to the plastic. <laughs> Dear, oh dear. I'm assuming they've got it on this, but you'll be able to look in the end too. But you'll be able to look at the side and if you get a if you get the honey super full to there, you'd be pretty right, I reckon, because I don't suppose you pull the frames out. I reckon you just look at them, and they would, then your way you'd go. That's all pretty bloody clever, but that'd be kind of cool because you'll be able to see a few girls running around the edge. You'll be able to say hello, girls, without even putting the lid off. You'll be able to get the kids involved because they'll be able to see the bees and not have to be of any worry to them. Cool. Twang! A bit like my bloody other observation hive with <laughs> smashing the window. But this is perspex, so we're all good. If I break this, I'm going to get sacked. <laughs> but I'm assuming there'd be spare parts, wouldn't there? I don't know. There would be. Would be there would be. I surely wouldn't be the only ruffian that had broken a piece of perspex. Awesome, that's looking really good. Shall we we'll make, get our handle on the other side view part? Because we've got to put some little bits to hold that on. It's a bit like the TV of old. I'm in the box. Because <laughs> that's what it used to be called, wasn't it? Look at you, you're on the box. Now we're on a flat screen, or a mobile phone, or a laptop, or God knows where. <laughs> anyway, it's crazy. It's kind of cool though. <laughs> I reckon it would be very helpful if they had to put the handles on it <laughs> before I put it in there. 
very groovy. So we might do that. We'll screw a handle on there. Oh! Set this up so we can do the little lip bits. And we've got, we've got these little bits. Tell you what, it's actually kind of, like they've made this so cool that it's a nice centerpiece for your backyard. So when you're having your barbecue, or when you're having your mates around for dinner and you say, hey, let's get some honey chicken organized and you go, oh, oh it's a pity we haven't got actually honey at the moment. Oh, it's all right, we'll just nip out to the hive and grab some. <laughs> Something very important to remember according to these directions is that when you put these little knobbly bits on to hold that in there, you put a little bit of a spring-loaded part on there because otherwise you're going to have that so jolly tight it won't be able to move. Of course, if you don't have it tight enough, then it won't jolly well hold anything in. So, very clever thinking. We've got a little spring-loaded thing. Okay, that's in the spot. Okay, that's good. I don't think you want it too crazy tight. That's bloody clever. Like I said, I think these blokes might have made a couple of these and figured all this out. It's very well done. It'd be easy if you could see, wouldn't it? <laughs> right, that's pretty cool. Hello, come on. <laughs> and we want to put a, hand, a couple of handles on this one. That looks pretty groovy. And then we'll put the handles on these two. It's going to be a little ledgy bit that you pull out to do your turn keying. We might as well put the handles on that while we've got it. Bloody hell. Cool. Well, that sits in that bit. And then we've just got one little bit to hold you up that bit on. Oh, anyway, that's a bit of a bummer. Looks like the computer forgot to put a spring in. But anyway, that's all good. You'll be able to follow us along to talk to the hive, flow hive folks at their problem solving site, I'll bet you. And they'll probably have to mail me a new spring. But anyway, it won't matter. For this little bit, we'll just put it on here so we can stain it up at least. Don't get carried away screwing it down too hard. I don't think it'll be the end of the world for this particular part of it anyway. Well, here we go for the lid. We're going to get to the fancy bit of roof happening. So we want to have our roof mounted up. Oh, looks like it mounts together. So I figure I'm just going to put a few little pilot holes just so the screws have got something to go to. I don't want to split this wood, that'll suck, wouldn't it? That'll be living another excitement in my life. <laughs> This bit here is a different height to that as I showed you earlier. Obviously because it's got to fit this little door. So you've got to have that little door so you can get to work your mechanism. A little bit of ridge capping happening. tongue there so we got are they different hang on we'll just pop that one in there because that looks like that goes there anyway it's like we'll screw them down as we go so we've got to hold together otherwise we'll be in all sorts of troubles when we're putting it together we've got our brood box we got our little queen excluder it would be rather interesting if they actually started laying eggs in the jolly thing upstairs wouldn't it anyway that's not going to be a good idea that's got to be there a 
think it's since we've got to this point that we're a little bit pressed for time. What we might do is get our tug oil or tongue oil. Well, I don't know. We're arguing about how you pronunciation of this. I think it's tongue. <laughs> Apparently it's from a cool seed. We might get some of that oil, paint her up, let her sit over here for a bit before we before we pull our um, cool ass flow hive honey supers on the top. Because that'll be a job we can do while this is drying out. So we'll do that now, I reckon. We'll get our get our paintbrush, give her a bit of a paint up so we can protect her up, and then I'll be looking schmicko. finish all the tug oil soaked in I reckon that's looking pretty good I reckon we we're about ready to get some bees organized and now we've just got to unpack our flow frames pop them in the super and go and get some chicks organized so we can get some honey on tap right now this is a kind of cool little treat I reckon Beauty. look at that so I've never actually played with this flow hive before so I thought we better have a look at the directions and it says We've got to test them out just to make sure it works before we put them in our super, which is a good option. Otherwise, that'd really suck if they got full of honey in here. <laughs> Couldn't get it out, wouldn't it? There it looks like you put it in the bottom bit and give it a half crank, and then they should be opened up. Did that move at all? I didn't see from the side. Doesn't move very far. Take it out, pop it in the top, and wind it back the other way. Just mm. trying to see how much it actually moves. Not a heck of a lot, really, does it? Well, that's pretty bloody ingenious. Take the plug out, you get. <laughs> I just thought I might show you the little tubes. Obviously, when we get to the honey part, you just take out your little cork here, pull that out. So there's just a little cutout on that part that goes in, a little spot where it slots into. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with honey on the ground, which would be a bit sad. Then obviously, you put your, take that out, put your little crank handle in, give it a little turn, pop, and out flows some beautiful nectar without any effort. How bloody awesome is that? I wonder, I wonder if that would be cool because then you wouldn't end up with honey and shit all over your missus's the door handles. <laughs> that might be the plan. So it might be a good investment even just to save getting in the shit with your beekeeping hobby. So this is our brood box and as I was saying, we have already got some bees on some frames so we're just gonna pop them in the brood box and then away we go. Got our bees in there, we got a queen excluder. Put our cool ass super on the top. Make sure she's all a bit square. And then you're gonna want your cover board. Keep all the ladies nice and cozy. <sighs> yep, and then we've got the lid. Yeah, hang on. There's two ways this can go. Yep, that's the front. So you're gonna have your shorter one at the back. So you can actually open your little door. Otherwise you'll be in all sorts of strife. Well, there's the construction part. Now, just if you happen to be doing this from a like a package of bees that or a little swarm that's had turned up don't put the super on straight up because you'll, you'll be getting a little excited so you just want the brood box and let the ladies build some brood comb and get themselves established before you put the super on otherwise they've got too much room to expand and keep organized and next thing you know you'll have bloody wax moths or hive beetles or goodness knows who else turns up everybody or ants in the top bit We'll get ourselves organised and pop the bees in there. As a little footnote, I was reading in the directions, which would surprise everybody, 
that if you happen to be in a ridiculously cold climate, it's not such a bad idea to put a small super between the actual flow hive and the actual brood box. So anyway, not that we live where it's cold, we live where it's too bloody hot, so <laughs> it's all good. My dear wife's gonna be most excited when she gets home and sees this in her backyard. I reckon it looks bloody awesome too. Thanks for the team at Flow High for sending it along and letting us try it out. Thanks for all our viewers that give them a bit of a rev up on the email and the phone calls and goodness knows what else happened. So if you want to get your hands on one of these cool Flow Hives, we've put a link in the descriptions. And if you click on that and purchase it through Amazon, that'll help us to help make the show keep ticking along. So yeah, get amongst it.